Hi, I'm Max Kaiser. This is the Kaiser Report. You know, revolutions are happening all over the world. The big question is, what about the United States of America? When's it going to start revolting? I know it's already revolting, but when's it going to really revolt? Stacey Herbert, what's happening? The first war we're going to talk about is the economic war. Paul B. Farrell, forget Mubarak, it's Fed reign of terror that must end. Now, this is your take with a very pretty picture on uh, Paul B. Farrell's headline, Fed dictator Bernanke needs to be toppled. So he says that the Fed boss, Ben Bernanke, is the most dangerous human on earth, far more dangerous than Hosni Mubarak, Egypt's 30-year dictator, ever was. Bernanke rules a monetary dictatorship that will trigger the coming third meltdown of the 21st century. Right. You know, a year ago or so, Paul B. Farrell over there at Market Watch, Dow Jones, might have been accused of sedition. But because the global insurrection against banker occupation is gathering storm, gathering force all over the world, the forces that are in power now can't stop it. The momentum is too high. So we're seeing Egypt, we're seeing Tunisia, we're seeing riots all over the world. In America, it's coming. It's coming soon, and it's time for a regime change. And he's right to target the Federal Reserve Bank, because Obama, let's face it, Obama is just a sideshow. The real power is Ben Bernanke and the Federal Reserve Bank. That's where the regime change needs to take place. And Ben Bernanke is the figurehead for a collection of private banks and a few corporations like Chevron who own the Fed. And they are the ones that pr are profiting from this economic war, as Paul B. Farrell talks about it. Uh, he, he lists 10 reasons for uh, weapons of this uh, financial warfare that perpetrated by the Fed. And I'll list you three of them. Commodity price inflation will soon end the Fed dictatorship. Next, near zero rates means banks richer, masses poor, meltdown. And then finally, easy money fueling worldwide inflation and a new meltdown. So we've, as you've mentioned, we've seen this in commodity price inflation all over the world. Well, as you point out, the Federal Reserve Bank is owned by banks and corporations. It's a private corporation. It's not a function of the United States government in any way. It's there as a lobbying group for corporations. The number two you mentioned, near zero percent interest rates. This is really the killer because in the United States and around the world, interest rates are not allowed to trade per the market. They're kept artificially low to give free money to the speculators. Whenever they make a losing bet, then the government bails them out. And to pay for the government's bailout, they put a gun to the people's head through austerity measures. We're seeing it in Greece. We're seeing it in Ireland. They put a gun to the people's head with austerity measures to bail out the banks who were holding the government hostage. So this is just easy money fueling worldwide inflation. Yes, they're getting greedy. They're forcing prices to go up to astronomical price levels. I read a statistic somewhere on the number of people actually forced into poverty. Well, that's our next headline. Yeah, yeah. Next I mean, this is really so. fantastic. So uh, continue on to get into the nitty gritty. World Bank warns of soaring food price dangers. So apparently in the last year, an estimated 44 million people have been pushed into poverty since last summer by soaring commodity prices. Robert Zolik, the World Bank president, said food prices have risen by almost 30 percent in the past year. Wheat has doubled. Maize is up 73 percent. So this is what you're seeing uh, going on in the world. Right. And this is caused from primarily the Federal Reserve Bank is increasing the supply of cheap fiat money. The demand for the food is not the problem. It's the supply of credit that's giving speculators an easy way to make greedy uh, bucks in the short term, even though it's putting 44 million people on the starvation lines. So, I mean, think about the number of people who died in World War II, people who died in previous wars. Uh, this is uh, of that comparable size. The Federal Reserve is actually putting mi tens of millions of people into, their, into a grave. Well, that's 44 million people, yes, that they're causing to starve, which is why Paul B. Farrell says that Ben Bernanke is more dangerous than Mubarak. And remember, Mubarak was a front man just for the military-industrial complex. Ber ben Bernanke operates on behalf of the financial-industrial complex. That's right. So um, there's going to need to be 
a regime change at some point as a matter of survival. You know, people in America debate whether it's a left-wing issue or a right-wing issue. It's not left or right. It's a matter of survival. Either you get rid of Bernanke or you die. But the situation, Max, we got rid of Mubarak, but who's going to be put in there by the military-industrial complex but another dictator? That's what will happen. The same thing. You can get rid of Ben Bernanke. He is a financial dictator, but the guys behind him are still there, and they'll put in another guy who might be a little bit more pleasant, Jamie Dimon, a little bit better looking than Ben Bernanke, perhaps he'll be it. Well, that's why I say everyone in the world should buy silver, silver bullion, because that's the underbelly sore spot, the vulnerability of these banks. You mentioned Jamie Dimon. JP Morgan's vulnerability is their short silver position. So the wealth that all these banks stole using the Fed to bring that wealth back home Buy silver, you have the double effect of becoming wealthy yourself while putting these banks out of business by driving their stock price to zero. So you're right, there will be more dictators behind the current dictators, more CIA operatives behind the current CIA operatives. That's why you've got to go for the global insurrection against banker occupation. Buy silver, put them all out of business. A lot of people will say, oh, you can't possibly touch J.P. Morgan because they are the Fed, they are the government. But this next headline and this next bit of information we have here shows you that you can scare them. Food price follies, the grown-ups step in. Now this is the reformed broker Joshua Brown talking about an announcement from Deutsche Bank, a crucial bank to this global banking cartel, very crucial in the creation of derivatives. Now they have suspended further issuance of the PowerShares DB Agriculture double long exchange traded note. It trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol DAG. Um, apparently, industry sources believe that exposure the ATN was holding to corn, wheat, soybeans, and sugar futures was nearing limits that might attract the attention of regulators at the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. That's right. One way to keep the lid on the speculators running amok are position limits and margin requirements. As you, if you remember, at the end of last year, silver was getting through 30, and then the CFTC under former Goldman Sachs guy, Gary Gensler and his crew simply expanded the position limits and expanded uh, the margin requirements or reduced the margin requirements. And in such a way, they allowed for more of the criminals, the criminal banking elite, to manipulate these prices even more. But, you know, there are hundreds of millions of us. There's only a few of them. Price of silver is going to $500 an ounce, and that will pretty much take care of... JP Morgan. But going back to these agricultural products, Joshua Brown ends with the torches and pitchforks may have been put into cold storage as the economy rebounded, but trust me, the villagers know where they left them. So he's saying that Deutsche Bank was right to put away this double long, like highly leveraged exchange traded note, which would help drive up the price of already high commodities, agricultural products. Well, everything on the margins in the commodities business is being examined by the speculators and the governments who are beholden to the people. Because the governments, even in Germany, Merkel doesn't want to have to deal with a revolt in Germany because she allowed for the special products to engineer speculative excesses by the worst financial criminal uh, among us, the terrorists. So she's looking after her own uh, interests. At some point, you really have to decide, do you want to survive and, uh, and go, go, go on servicing the needs of the speculators at risk of having a re revolution in your country. And that's, that's, what, that's what it's come to now in this year. Now back to the U.S., the other duopoly part of this financial war is the military war, the military-industrial complex. And a lot of great unmentioned in this global financial catastrophe we've seen is the role of the unfunded U.S. wars around the world. They are being funded. It's through money printing and instability in the financial system. Now, here's a little video of Jeffrey Sachs, who is a professor at um, Harvard and also a U.N. advisor. And here's his take on Obama's new budget. And we're turning around and we're just going to keep driving down the poorest of the poorest of the poor. And that's where we are. This is a game that's going to come to an end in a bad way. Do we really have to have our own Egypt here in the United States? Or are we going to actually understand that we have a society where half the people have no voice in this country at all? Yeah, remarkable. You know, Obama basically is cutting money, stealing money from the poor to give to the rich. He's the reverse Robin Hood. That's correct. And as a percentage of the budget now, the military, the Pentagon budget has gone up. And actually, I have a chart here. You can see where the $3.6 of Obama's budget goes. Along the bottom, that's defense. 
and Social Security, the two major components of the budget. And you could also add in the veteran benefits of $124 billion and then Medicare at $462 billion. That in total. So just the Pentagon and the budget for retirees is over $2 trillion of the $3.6 trillion. Whether or not the pitchforks are going to come out, you see in this new Gallup poll, Americans divided on defense spending. So overall, 39% of Americans, according to the latest Gallup poll, say the U.S. spends too much on defense. 22% say it spends too little, and 35% say defense spending is just fine. Here's another chart if you look at the partisan divide. A full 40% of Republicans say too little is spent on military, and 9% of Democrats say the same thing. And yet, look back at that chart you see from the $3.6 trillion in government expenditure, almost half of it is from just military spend. And yet, yeah. this is not welfare, this is not corporate welfare. Well, that's, that's exactly the point that should be made. If the question was, do you support welfare for uh, psychopaths in, in the industrial military contracting business, most people would say no. But you call it defense, and it gets confusing. Of course, th the fact is, Stacey, that if the, if the interest of these uh, dollars being spent on military hardware is to defend the homeland and to proffer some security, I suggest America stop invading countries and killing people and inviting retribution, like we saw in 9-11. But the important thing to look at here is you, we talked about the economic war, and a lot of money went missing in these offshore vehicles, in these fake derivatives. And the same thing is happening here with this fake war. It's kind of a fake war in Afghanistan and Iraq because, I mean, a lot of people were killed and bombs were dropped, but billions and billions and billions constantly go missing. There are constant government oversight reports saying, well, we lost 10 billion this month. We don't know what happened to all that cash. It's gone. The same thing. So it's just money going to total welfare queens that are just pocketing the money, taking it out via uh, Dubai, transferring it back into the U.S. in suitcases. Yeah, and what substitutes for American military these days are crack addled kids in Florida playing video games attached to howitzers and machine guns, flying predator drones in Pakistan, blowing up civilians for a milkshake and bonus. And then finally, you know, bringing it back, the military industrial complex meets the financial industrial complex. This OMB chart shows how the financial crisis ruined America's debt outlook. So the reason why Barack Obama is slashing $1.1 trillion in spending on poor people is because many, uh, the media pays a lot of attention to what poor people receive. And it's, even though it's a tiny, 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 tiny percentage of the overall U.S. budget, this chart shows their six-year budget projections, and as you can tell from 2008, it totally went ballistic because the financial crisis happened then. So because of the financial crisis, because of the banking crimes, the difference now is 49% gap between where the deficit would have been and where it is now. All right, Stacey Edward, thanks again for being on the Kaiser Report. Thank you, Max. Now when I come back, I'll be speaking with William D. Hartung, who wrote a book, Profits of War, much about the military-industrial complex that don't go away.